the series is going to look like in the future. Uh, today we have Gary Gress as a speaker. He is going to be going over places, uh, landscapes, and regions with you guys. Uh, I think it's going to be great. Uh, you guys are really lucky to have Gary here. Uh, he's taught for a long time in Norman. He was involved in Oakage for a long time as the coordinator. And now he's currently teaching at the Department of Geography and Environmental Sustainability at the University of Oklahoma. So um, I will turn it over to Gary here in just a minute as soon as he's ready and uh, we'll get started. Oh, Becca, thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity. Um, I assume everybody can hear me, my wonderful booming voice. Uh, I'm, I'm Gary Gress. Uh, actually, I am, uh, I used to be, I still am, I suppose, Becca, an OKHTC board member. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is, uh, besides talking about interesting times, I thought this cartoon was, was just right in there because Oh my gosh, I mean, uh, even at the university level, uh, we're doing what? I mean, we're in the classroom, we're doing uh, online teaching. You guys out there uh, that are with us today uh, are probably doing a combination of both, one or the other, who knows? Uh, truly interesting times. I thought this cartoon was pretty hilarious though, the teachers on the outside looking in and uh, talk about social distancing. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing uh, what I call, and I, 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 I think that this is a good apropos, if you will, uh, title for all of this. It's, it's thinking spatially. I, I always like to think of, I, by the way, when I teach, those of you that know me, I'm extremely animated. I run around the room. I do all kinds of crazy things. So this is uh, rather strange for me to be doing it this way. Usually I'm a participant and not the speaker. But anyway, uh, let's call this thing thinking spatially. Uh, I like little cutesy little things. So every place has a face and every region has a reason. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today as far as that's concerned. So, hey, thanks for tuning in. Um, by the way, we're going to be using all kinds of geo tools for your toolbox. Obviously, we're talking about spaces and places. Uh, in the process, we're going to be expanding. Many of us know already, a lot of us teach actually about regions. So we're going to expand, we're going to enhance, and if you are really a little bit uh, shaky on regions, we're going to not only do that, we're going to be really, really digging deep a little bit as far as what regions are all about. Um, more active classroom critical thinking. Uh, I'm going to be throwing out some stuff for you guys as far as how to take this into your classrooms, some examples of that. Uh, we're going to be thinking about not only the human and physical aspects uh, and also obviously the places we're going to be talking about because when you think of a place whatever special place that is whatever place you can conjure up in your mind i mean let's face it uh, we're bombarded by media images uh, we have our own perceptions of things we you know friends and people tell us things about certain places and of course personal experiences are, are pretty important too so I was thinking about this. I said, well, what, what do I say? Okay, well, this is, this is how I look at this every single day. And not that I'm going to read this word for word, but we are part of those spaces and places. Some of those are large, some of those are small. And of course, it's because of our actions, because of how we observe things, because of the reading we do about it, because of our discussions and all these memories, both past and present. That's what we have. And when you think about things spatially, uh, I think that's what geography is really all about. Uh, you know, places and landscapes, they both have similarities and differences. And it, whether you're, you know, trekking around in the world and, uh, you know, you're at some remote Icelandic village, uh, whether you are in Nashville and you're going into uh, Layla's Bluegrass Inn, uh, or, you know, maybe some sort of a Houston suburban landscape or a post office, believe it or not, called cut and shoot. You know, how would you like to live in a town like that? Or maybe a, a very rural place uh, called El Cerrito, uh, New Mexico. Every one of these places, every one of these images and pictures that you see, they, they all have similarities and they all have differences. And that's, that's what we're gonna be exploring today. So our lineup, all right, here we go. 
first we're going to be thinking about those places and we're going to say why are they there what what makes them so important and then we're going to be reading like a book we're going to be reading these landscapes and places and we're going to be determining the reason the reason or the focus so actually what it involves is geodetective work and then we're going to be using some tools to experience the concept of the region and boy, we'd be, we'd be so remiss if we didn't apply this stuff uh, to your classroom and your curriculum. So anytime you have an idea, anytime you have something that you say, oh, I've got to do that, uh, go ahead and write it down. By the way, you will be getting a copy of this PowerPoint. Please steal anything off of it you want, and you will be able to use every single thing in your classroom if you so choose to do that, okay? Well, during our regions experience, uh, we're going to be looking at everything through the lens of geography. You will need paper, so you don't have to scramble off and get paper. But, uh, you know, if you feel the need to, it would be nice if you had a piece of paper or some kind of scrap pad near you. Believe it or not, uh, if you do have paper handy, you'll be asked to draw. Uh, you're going to be asked to write some thoughts down just when you thought this was not too interactive. Aha, it is. And uh, not only that, uh, at the end or during, if you have a particular question, we'll try and answer those questions at the end. So write those down too. And then, like I said before, any of these ideas, anything you see here, please, please, please use it in your classroom. Um, that's what it's all about. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Uh, da, we have detectives, don't we? And uh, on these things, we're gonna have part one, I'm gonna say, let's, let's show you some geodetective tools, if you will. Part two, we're gonna experience those regions. And those regions can be anything. Um, you know, pictures are a lovely way of uh, connoting or expressing regions. And it could be anything from a guy uh, near Central Park in November playing a piano or anything from Hoover Dam. And we'll be talking about all kinds of different examples that you can take back into your classroom and use. I didn't know what to call these. Uh, we all know a lot of this is very much common sense. I, I'm going to call them gressisms, uh, not that I'm trying to self-aggrandize myself. I couldn't think of anything else. Please remember that everything changes. All places change. They sort of have a morphology or a process. Um, you know, places are unique, and every single place has a reason to be there, whether it's through activities, whether it's through the artifacts, the resources, the issues. You, you get the idea, okay? Every, every place has a reason, if you will. All places, they use space differently, and they have different patterns, and we can always map every single pattern pretty much, you know. Every place in space, yep, is part of a larger what? Larger region or landscape, okay? So what we're dealing with is we're, we're dealing with large and small landscapes, if you will. So here we go. We're going to get a little interactive, and I sure do hope uh, you can run off and grab a piece of paper, by the way, if you don't have one. Uh, I'll try and give you some time, but you heard that word, okay? Think of a place or landscape. Sketch the first landscape image that comes to your mind. So if you do have a scrap piece of paper, just start sketching what you think, uh, whatever landscape image comes to your mind. Uh, if you're doing this mentally, okay. Go for it. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Notice I said a few seconds. <laughs> Keep doing it, by the way. Hopefully you do have a pencil. Hopefully you have some paper. And by the way, this, this image that came to your mind as you're doing it, keep doing it. Uh, maybe that landscape, some, some place you might've visited. It could be something you've driven by. It could be some place you are very familiar with. Maybe a place has created some memories for you, you know, and maybe some involved activities. Maybe a place you're sketching uh, maybe has some issues, but landscape is an interesting word for sure. Uh, and of course, maybe it's, it's a place that's well known. So try, don't change your, don't change your drawing just because you saw these, this wonderful uh, list I just created here for you on the right hand side of the slide, but just keep drawing and we'll wrap this up.
Okay, maybe not much, not a whole lot of time. So let's see what happens. So, all right, if I ask you to describe your landscape, you know, either mentally or hopefully you had a chance to draw a little something if you do have a pencil and paper. Uh, most likely, not entirely, but most likely, it might have been something that is what? Very aesthetic looking, very grandiose maybe, most likely. I did say most likely, okay, <laughs> in all fairness. Um, so what would be your landscape definition? What is your definition of landscape? Think about that a while. You just drew something. You're using the word landscape, okay? I've got my, I, I, I enlarged my cursor a little bit here so you might be able to see it. And so think of a definition for landscape if you don't mind. You can, you know, you don't have to write this down. So when I look at the word landscape, I decided, all right, I'm gonna Google this, all right? I found as probably your drawing might reflect, uh, an, a definition that says an expanse of scenery that can be seen in a single view or landscape. Natural areas of land, natural, that are distinguished by differences in landforms, vegetation, land use, and, and is also aesthetic, has aesthetic characteristics. So we know it's expansive. We know it could be natural. We know it's mostly a lot of people think of aesthetics. Then I decided, all right, here, I got to do something about this. I, you know, I, I okay, I'm a geographer. What, what do I do? I decided to add the word geography or geographic to it. Well, that definition includes what? Both natural and bum, bum, bum. I'm going to be a little melodramatic here. Human modification. Human modification. Wow. So there isn't a physical landscape, pretty much. I mean, there, I don't think there's anything that's totally pristine forever. But anyway, most physical landscapes have been what? They've been modified, OK? I mean, obviously, I live in the Oklahoma City metropolitan area. And by golly, historically, it started out as maybe tent city. We'll explain a little bit about that in a little bit. But the key word here is modified, modified. So, okay, landscapes and places, they change. They become modified. And with any place that is past or current, we got to ask some questions about it and encourage your students to do this too, all right? Why is it there? Why was it there? I mean, obviously, uh, if you're talking about Oklahoma City, it was on a rail line, a railroad line. Uh, it became if you will, Ten City. People were interested in its, you know, transportation, uh, networking, and it was a crossroads in a sense. Of course, original cattle trails and then rail, rail activity. And, and you have to ask, well, why is it here now and how has it been changed? And of course, that was that image I showed you of Oklahoma City has changed quite a bit. What's the importance of Oklahoma City? Still could be a transportation hub. I mean, everybody's got a different opinion about this. I mean, uh, it, it could be if, if you're coming at it from an economic standpoint, if you're coming at it from a cultural standpoint, you know, it depends what your take is. And so maybe some people from a touristy standpoint say, hey, Oklahoma City, why is it important? Well, because it's got, you know, maybe the Bricktown Canal. Uh, maybe they think of sports. Maybe it's important because of a team, a particular sports team. So, you know, that, that's, that's an important thing to remember. So that's why I'm always asking people, look, when you're looking at any kind of landscape or any kind of place, always ask what I call the why of where. We have what I call the physical stage. I mean, that's the stage we've been born with, that physical landscape. And so when I look at this, this is near us here in Norman. This is uh, Oliver's Woods, if you will. Oliver's Woods used to encompass this entire area along what we call Route 9, and part of Oliver's Woods has been created and changed by, well, you know, maybe commercial efforts, Rudy's, if you will, barbecue place. 
So that's what geography does, okay? It studies the relationship between the, if you will, the physical place and what human modifications have taken place or occurred over time. All places, remember, have a reason. They have a reason why they're there. Every place is part of a what? A region, and we'll get into that. That place right there, it has a reason to be in the middle of the water. It's a restaurant. Um, I mean, actually, it's a, somewhat of a tourist trap, but it has a reason to be there. That place right there on the bottom left, it has a reason to be there. If you live in the Muskogee area, you know that that's one of your larger coal producing power plants. Every place has a reason, a reason. And it's all part of a region too. Stockyard City, Oklahoma City, if you will, okay? Maybe Little Sahara in Oklahoma. Every place has a reason and it's part of a region, okay? And of course, you can go into some of the cultural aspects of this as far as this is in Oklahoma City, what they call the Asian district, okay? Okay, you can do detective work in your own hometown. I, I strongly encourage you to do that. This particular place right here, if you can barely see the sign, I know you can't, okay? It says interurban, all right? Well, interurban happens to be this logo right here. And if you, you can't probably see it, it says since 1976. Well, wait a minute. That shot certainly doesn't look like 1976. It isn't. Actually, it's just a few years old. Well, how in the heck did this place associate itself with that word, interurban? What was it? Let's, you know, being a detective. Well, before it became this place on the left, okay, it was that. I say, well, okay, inner urban. What is it? Well, obviously it's a restaurant, those of you didn't know. What was it before it was a restaurant? Okay, well, it was an interurban station, if you will, a light rail train station. And that's where it got its name, interurban, a light rail system that was connecting Norman, Oklahoma City, and other surrounding towns, interurban. And of course, the restaurant kept that namesake and has now grown to a few other locations in the area. So have some fun, do some detective work with your students, give them that sense of place, and then you can say, wait a minute, that's part of a region, isn't it? And we'll get into this even more. Landscape, they have various reads, okay? They have focal points of interest. And of course, the focal point or the points of interest, come on, I mean, there, there's physical, natural looks of regions. They could be physical. They could be have a functional focus to them. We'll talk a little bit more about that. That one is a little bit more interesting for students to get grasp of the functional focus of a region. Uh, regions have, or places have, economic importance, historic interest, if you will. They could be revolving around issues, various issues, uh, and they could also have, of course, human cultural importance to them. That's sort of a, a laundry list, if you will, on how to think of various places uh, and various reads, if you will, R-E-A-D-S, of a region. So, okay, so there might be some Obviously, you know, what are they? A physical, this is pretty obvious, this upper left-hand picture is pretty obvious for a physical, if you will, landscape or region, all right? Functional, well, you can probably guess that functional means connections. We'll talk a little bit about that, but anyway, uh, we'll get into that a little bit more. Economic, historical, so each one of these pictures, I mean, shoot, the, uh, the painting I have here, of the Taos Pueblo, that could be a historic, but when you really look at these, you have to agree that all of these could represent any one of these economic, historic, issue related, or cultural. So I'm just tossing these ideas out for you to say, you know, when you wanna warm up to the fact of how places look and how are they associated with various regions? This might be a way to do it, okay? Focus on the physical, functional, economic, historic. Is it issue related or how cultural is it? So landscapes and places, what is the difference? Well, okay, uh, they are relatively, depending on the scale, commonly interchangeable. Yep, 
But however, most times place generally refers to a smaller specific study area within a larger area. Landscape, most people associate that with a larger or more broad area, like that landscape drawing that you did in your, on your paper or in your mind. All places, remember, 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 have common characteristics. All places somehow, some way relate to one another, and yet they are different at the same time. Well, let's have some fun with this. Visual, visualize, if you can, a pile of random shoes. Yeah, I hope you have that in your mind. Oh, by the way, in case you don't have that pile of shoes, yeah, you heard right, you know, pile of shoes, different styles, different colors, different sizes. In, in case you can't visualize, there you go, there's your pile of shoes. Now, what I'm gonna ask you to do, and you can have your students imagine this too, but I've got another exercise for your students to do to get this idea or concept of region across. What would you do to create a sense of order for, the, for that pile of shoes. So I'm gonna ask you, please, 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 go ahead and write down some ideas that you've got on how to get those shoes, give them some sort of sense of order. I'll give you a couple of seconds to work on that. Okay, now you knew I was going to do this because I'm going to ask you to describe your arrangement. Now we're not doing this out loud, but uh, you know, mentally, and of course, if you want to write any of this down, you're more than welcome to. But in your mind, how did you do? How did you arrange these, if you will? Okay, well, most of you, and you know where I'm going with this, most of you created a da 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 da, -da a region. Why? Why have you created a region? Because you made common characteristics. You grouped them together, maybe sizes, maybe colors, maybe similarities, okay? So maybe you can think of a specific region. Think of one right now, but as I like I say, hold that thought. We're getting there, but let's hold that thought right now. But the concept of region, common characteristics, all right? Now, if you want to do this in your classroom, uh, the way I do it sometimes is I use poker chips or chips, okay? And you'll have this PowerPoint to always go back to and use. Uh, pretty much what I do is three to four colors of chips, uh, you know, patriotic, why not? Red, white, and blue, right? Uh, maybe have baggies of five chips each color. And what we're trying to do, divide the class maybe into groups, three to five students in a group. If you get over five students, it becomes a little bit more argumentative, but you know, hey, go for it, whatever you want. And then tell them they have three minutes to do whatever they want to with those chips. But whoa, 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 the entire group must agree. Why are we doing this? We're trying to get the concept of region across, common characteristics. So maybe they put all one color of chips in a group, maybe all blues, all whites, all reds, you know, I don't know. Maybe each chip groups have one of each, one blue, one red, one white. Maybe they put them in random, random color groups. And of course, that's still, in a sense, uniform, isn't it? So that might be a way to get this concept of common characteristics and uniformity in your student's mind, OK? So what are those characteristics, OK? The shoes, right? Some sort of uniformity, some sort of commonality, color sameness. Pattern sameness, random, that's part of it too. That could be a consistent, if you will, uh, attribute. So definition, places, large, small, whatever they are, they have common characteristics, whether it's a fishing village in the world, wherever, whether it's a barrio or a ghetto, they all have common characteristics and are considered large or small regions. Okay, all regions, large or small, have common characteristics. Well, we have to somehow rein them in so they have boundaries. I mean, it could be as simple as a map. This is a map of the University of Oklahoma. It could be a, a boundary, a physical boundary, maybe a, a road stop, if you will, a checkpoint. Um, 
Boundaries can be both mental and they can be physical. They can create regions, remember, and they can help define areas. I think that's the key, it defines the area. All places are a product of their site and their situational unique factors. I mean, when I, when I think of food, okay, I mean, I'm always drawn to this, you know, stereotypically people think that all people in Texas only eat steak. Uh, this one is okra for Oklahoma. And this is sort of a, if you will, uh, you know, somewhat of a popular kind of region approach, okay? Regions help put places and events, what? They, they help us understand this stuff in context. I mean, we're very unique in Oklahoma because we have uh, right now at this point, 13 incorporated, we used to have uh, close to 50 or more uh, African-American black towns after the Civil War and actually prior to the Civil War uh, because of uh, freed slaves. Uh, have your students play with some of this stuff. Here's another map of Oklahoma, if you will putting a region in context. This has to do with wind gradient. And of course the red means obviously more wind than not, okay? You can have a linear region. This is Route 66 going from Chicago all the way to Los Angeles, linear region, area of common characteristics, helps us put things in places in context, if you will. By the way, we have more, you know, uh, miles of Route 66 in any other state. Maps represent different regions. So what regions are represented on these maps? Well, let's look at one. There you go. The red. Hmm. Maybe think about that a little bit. What region would that be? Wow. Well, let's put this a little bit more in context. Now I'm looking at a map where we have Utah as a dark, very, very dark blue. And then the area that surrounds that, okay, different shades of lighter blue. So this particular region right here might give you a clue. And of course, if you're reading this, it says Latter-day Saints, uh, that might be associated with that. This is sort of a fun one to have your students to maybe take a wild guess at. Well, believe it or not, this is called, I'm, I'm not kidding you folks, this is called the Jello Belt, okay? The Jello Belt, well, believe it or not, if you look it up, Utah's state snack, snack I, I don't know what Oklahoma's is, I, I, I forgot to look it up, but it's particularly lime jello. Why? Because when people go to social events, they take lime jello salads or any other kind of jello salad. And it seems like the state of Utah sells more jello products than most other places in the world. Yeah, I know. Hard to believe, right? Region, area of common characteristics. There's a reason for that region to be there. Well, you know, regions have a focus. They could be political focus, that's government structures. They can be physical focus, like landforms, natural features. They can be economic focused, goods, services, and of course, cultural focus, what people value. Regions can have formal boundaries. They can exhibit a functional purpose. We'll get into this a little bit, formal, functional. And also they can be vernacular or what we call popular. They can become very, very popular areas of interest. Guess what? Any combination of these two. In other words, they could be political, physical, economic, cultural, all, all at the same time, varying deg degrees of scale, if you will. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So, all right, political, if I were to stereotype, say, well, uh, that's a political region, right? Okay, I mean, uh, counties, especially the state itself. Physical region, we're back to the dunes area, if you will, Little Sahara. Economic, it could be a resource-driven kind of economic region, if you will. This is a near southern Oklahoma, uh, and it's, it's a mining operation, a gypsum mining operation. Or it could be, back to that picture, it could be cultural. For instance, the Asian district or some thereabouts district like that. An economic region, let's look at something over time. You have a lot of fun with your students on this one too. 
Well, you, you know where I'm going with this one, Oklahoma. Uh, Cle let's take Cleveland, Oklahoma as a past and current example of, of economic or the economy. Obviously, 1904, wow, oil was discovered. The town was an oil town, boom town, actually. And there it is. There's a picture of Cleveland, Oklahoma, if you will, thanks to that, thanks to the oil boom. But if you want to look at this over time, here is Cleveland, Oklahoma today, no longer an oil boom town, uh, more of a bedroom community, if you will, for people that sleep there and go to work in other places. By the way, you can have a little fun if you go back and take a little time with historical photos. This particular building in this photo here, okay, basically is that particular building in that photo there. So you can have a little fun with this stuff. Uh, moving down the pike. All right, let's move down the pike. All right, let me see if I can pull this thing up. All right. So regions can also be classified by traits. All right. We have formal regions. They're uniform, right? It could be a physical, it could be a cultural trait, but they could be uniform, whether it's language, whether it's whatever. Regions can be very functional. They can be defined by their interactions, okay? Trade, movement, some sort of communication, if you will. Regions can be vernacular uh, or popular. That's why I put that, you know, popular regions, whatever our perceptions of that region are. It could be no man's land, something like that, okay? Vernacular region. So let's drill into these just a little bit. Let's take a closer look. Formal regions, remember? Uniformity, one or more physical or cultural features, okay? The reason why I have physical here and the reason why I have political here, I'm gonna show you a formal physical and political unit, okay? There's the physical. Appalachian Mountains, okay? Uh, Ozark Plateau, we have Sierra Nevada Mountains. You get the idea. That's a physical formal region. Well, okay, let's look at political. Political formal regions, states in the United States, not only Oklahoma, but all the other states. Just to give you an idea. Let's continue on this. Remember, formal region, uniformity, more defined boundaries, right? It has a driving physical, political, or cultural, and I emphasize cultural because sometimes re regions by its various pictures can also tell us what they're all about. This is the Amish community. It could be in Oklahoma. This particular one is in Ohio, Bellevue, Ohio. That is a uniform region common characteristics by the way that the people interact by maybe their transportation systems, their stores, culture, homes, whatever. You can go historical on this. This is the Incan Trail in Peru. Regions, remember, uniformly. They could be divine, defined boundaries and of course cultural, cultural, cultural. So all right, let's see classifications of regions. We have formal regions, right? We're going to get to vernacular. Remember, that's the popular one. But right now, let's talk about functional regions. This one for students may be a little bit more difficult. So defined by interactions, movement, trade, communication. There is a functional region. That particular functional region has nodes to it. That's a, by the way, a, a smaller airline carrier. And that's some of the cities that that airline flies to. There are interactions between these particular nodes, N-O-D-E's, uh, you know, that's places that are organized for, the, you know, maybe the, the uh, main purpose of that particular, whatever airport it is or whatever. And it's always movement between points. Now, okay, functional regions can also be maybe metro maps, if you will, of subway systems and things like that, bus lines, you name it. That's all part of a functional region movement between places around various nodes, if you will, okay? Now remember, larger political, physical, economic, cultural regions, within those, right? Within those are what? Many sub-regions. So, okay, this time of the year, maybe we're all thinking, why am I not in Hawaii for heaven's sakes, all right? So maybe let's pick on the island of Oahu, and in this, on this particular island, we see Pearl Harbor down here. We see Honolulu over here. Remember, there are many sub-regions within a particular region. 
And it all depends upon scale. It all depends upon scale. So primarily what we're looking at here is that, you know, Ford Island is part of what? Pearl Harbor. Remember, it depends upon the scale. We can look at now Honolulu, and because of scale, scale, we've created another region within a region. Let's move on. Formal regions, yep. Uniformity. Functional regions, right. Interaction. Last but not least, vernacular or popular regions, right? Widespread, popular, perception of a place or area, no man's land, Cajun country, Area 51, okay? Those can all be considered popular regions or vernacular regions, all right? Well, vernacular regions are perceived and collective and they're sometimes they're economic, sometimes they're physical, sometimes they're not. Here's a, a cutesy map, if you will, of vernacular regions. Widespread acceptance is a vernacular region or a popular region. Could it have a nickname? Maybe not so sharp are the borders, maybe they are. And of course, it may be based on environmental features too. So let's see, there's a big cowboy boot right by Oklahoma and Texas. You know, maybe that's a perception of this particular area of our part of the United States or our, where we live. Regional characteristics, regions have core areas. This is the Corn Belt of the United States. Wow, how many bushels of corn are here? Quite a few because this particular dark green area indicates the most bushels of corn in that particular region. It's considered the core, the strongest defining representation. And of course, this area right here, okay, if you will, that's the periphery. It's, it's, it's weaker, but it has similar characteristics. You're probably saying, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, what's that? Okay, well, that is an outlier similar to the core areas. However, that's a little bit more distant, if you will. Well, we're gonna be wrapping it up in about 10 minutes or so, but you know, maybe practice, you can do this with your students as far as what is a political, physical, economic, cultural, formal, functional region, and why? I mean, you can, you can say, well, geez, look at this map. I mean, we've got the political going here. We don't necessarily have the physical. Well, I guess we have the physical. There's, there's a sunflower, I guess. We have the formal. Yes, we have functional. There it is. There's Route 66 going from Chicago to Los Angeles. And popular could be because of various other things that you see on this picture. Wow. Memories, memories, and impressions. Wow. You know, all historic landscapes, they have memories and impressions. They are part of regions. So don't forget about the memories and the impressions. Some are positive, some are negative. Sights and sounds and smells and actions. Don't forget about those as far as regions are concerned. This is the University of Oklahoma. And when, our, when students come here, I mean, obviously there's a lot of impressions and memories that are here. All regions are unique. Okay, they have a common uniqueness, right? I mean, they could be displayed in certain ways of their uniqueness, whether it is these faux, if you will, Gothic arch, the seed sower, it, a sower. It could be something that deals with an issue or it could be uh, maybe a, a refinery of some sort, but every place has some sort of uniqueness attached to it, okay? Or some sort of essence or some sort of importance, if you will. All right, all places change. All places, places are unique. They have a reason to be there, okay? All places differently are created and they have different patterns, I should say, and they can be mapped. All places and spaces are part of larger and smaller areas of common characteristics called regions. Not quite done because we're gonna have some examples here. Before we do, regions have what? Physical attributes? Yep. They have human modifications? Yep. They have patterns? Boy, they sure do, don't they? Linear patterns? They have all kinds of patterns, don't they? There could be environmental activities associated with these regions. Of course, there's structures associated with regions. Cultural areas? You get the idea? Organizations are part of regions. And of course, regions have what we call local flavor. That's the essence. That's the importance of that particular region. And bottom line, 
reasons for being there. Reasons for being there. So regions are what? Well, here's a region, state of Louisiana, okay, formal region. And regions are large and small. I mean, greater New Orleans, that part, if you will, of Louisiana, that's a, a smaller than the state of Louisiana region. They could be within other regions. They could be formal. They could be functional. I mean, within the greater New Orleans region, I mean, we got the French Quarter, we've got Uptown, we've got Loyola University as an example. They could be popular, something that we are part of every day. The French Quarter has a lot of popular things going on with it as far as the tourist is concerned. Don't forget to get your beignet and of course your uh, Louisiana Cajun coffee there, French Quarter, okay? Something that we are part of every day for those people that are there. What's your definition of a region now? You might wanna make a mental note of this. You might wanna, in your mind, how would you define region right now? Now that we've gone through a lot of examples. So think about that. I'll wait a couple seconds. Region, what do you got? Hmm. Well, National Geographic says the region is the area of land that has common features. Yep, sure does. Natural or artificial features, including language, government, religion, that can define a region. Could be forest, wildlife, or climate. Hmm. Worldatlas.com says regions are areas that are widely divided by physical geography. Physical, that's that stage we were talking about, physical characteristics. And of course, what do we do? We modify it. So the human environmental aspects, the interaction that we have between things, these are areas that are marked by numerous unique properties. Remember that word unique. So the resources that you and your students will have is you've got a landscape packet. You can either you have it now or you can pick it up afterwards. We'll have it online. I know many of you are using the five themes of geography. You can find that at the NCGE website or AAG website. Many of you are using maybe what we call Geography for Life, GFL, the 18 national standards and essential elements. I like to concentrate on the elements. Some of us are, uh, quite a few of us are actually are using the NCSS C3 framework. And of course, Oklahoma Academic Standards for Social Studies. Now I'm gonna give you examples, don't run away yet. And I'm gonna give you some examples of using some of this, okay? You'll notice in your packet, even if you don't have a packet, uh, go ahead and download it. But I use this page, uh, it's Lewis, and it's called Axioms for Reading the Landscape. And it's a fun thing to do with students as far as showing them the picture, talking about landscapes, because landscapes mean, can be a clue to culture, okay? Landscapes are unity and equality. And boy, this one really gets them a lot, okay? It says here, all items in human landscapes, new and traditional, without exception, reflect that culture, no matter how seemingly important or not. Boy, this will get them going. McDonald's is just as culturally important as any historical cultural site in Washington, D.C. That's what we exhibit as how we are as a people. Whoa, I don't know about that one. What do you think? I use what I call the ABCs. This is on page seven, if you will, of the landscape packet. And you can use this as far as groups and ideas that you can have with your students as far as what's within that region or what kind of things can I think about when I'm building a region or really anything in geography this is an alphabetical list by for sure it's not complete you know add your own I like using the if you will uh, the elements and standards those of you that look at this very very closely will see that I've rearranged the elements and standards because I believe that we start out with the physical systems our human stage that we've been born with then what I do is I go to environment and society because we as people take that physical stage and what do we do? Boom, we modify it. Then after we modify that physical stage, I say, you know what? That's when we start seeing the activities and patterns. That's why I line up my elements and standards this way because all that one, two, three creates what? A place or a region. That's why I do it that way. And then down below here, you map it, you, you graph it. 
five themes of geography, Hoover Dam, if you're teaching the uh, five themes of geography, wow. Location, have your students say, where is that? What's, what, it, what is it about this place? What are the human environment interactions that have taken place? By the way, look at how that water level has dropped. And of course, what kind of movement is in this area? Well, boy, you, you, you fit right in because boom, if you're teaching the five themes of geography, da, 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 just think, you've already built your region right there. You can do a lesson on my place. You know, have your students say, all right, what about your place? You know, we've, we've learned about these regions. In what United States region do you think you are, kids, you know, or students? In what Oklahoma region do you think you are, guys? In what Oklahoma county are you, which is considered a region? So you can have a little fun with this uh, with your students too, okay? Uh, mapping, you have them map their town and their regions, you know? Um, you know, mine is the University of Oklahoma. I live on top of it. Uh, within that is what we call Campus Corner. You know, people can map these kind of things. And uh, in Norman, there is Main Street, and that's considered a region also. You can go back historically, too, and take the same shot if you can find it, if you're lucky enough. And here is the, uh, the Sooner Theater. Here it is up here. And you can see how things have changed over time. Have a little fun with regions, if you will, okay? So do something historic, do something suburban, do something pop, do something, anything dealing with resources and economics and things of that nature. Well, that's a wrap. Any questions, any comments, any concerns? Now I do have an extra section for those of you that are listening uh, on a dis uh, discussion that you can have and you can look at this on your own as far as C3 and uh, geography and how that's accomplished. So there you have it, sports fans. There it is. And uh, we'll see what's going on as far as any questions or anything of that, that nature. Thank you so much, Gary. That was awesome. Um, yeah, one of the things that I really like to drive home to everyone is that geography is the why of where. So that's kind of the standard ele elevator pitch that I give everyone whenever someone asks me, what's geography? It's why is something where it is? And so um, I think Gary gave us a great introduction of a lot of different things that geographers keep ourselves busy with. And um, thank you so much for coming. And I'm just going to give you guys some information about OCAGE. Um, Gary, we did have a question about sure. um, how to implement some of this into the classroom. Uh, we've been chatting while you were talking in the chat box. So um, do you have anything that you would like to add about that? Um, how you would maybe get students talking about regions or a good icebreaker, how, how you would implement yeah. some of this into a lesson? Yeah, my favorite activity is just uh, giving them uh, those poker chips or uh, you know, showing them a picture. Uh, but that poker chip thing, uh, at first I was scared doing that because, oh my God, they're not going to, she's just going to be ridiculous or they're going to be playing poker, who knows. Uh, but the bottom line is, and not on the elementary level, hopefully, but anyway, bottom line is, uh, I, th I think that's one of the better ones to do as far as just the poker chips are concerned. Uh, you can show them various pictures uh, and you can say, you know, various photographs of your own, your own personal collections, and you can say, what region do you think this is part of? You know, what characteristics do you see? What, what things do you see in this picture that we can talk about? Maybe go from that, you know, uh, and then use those, the, the packet, you know, the uh, ABCs, maybe that would be a good page, page seven. Uh, maybe talk about uh, that uh, traditional Lewis thing on page, I think it was three, uh, you know, areas of common characteristics and most regions are, you know, what, can can you believe you know get them started on something controversial uh hey what do you think uh you know mcdonald's is just as important as the jefferson memorial huh you know that kind of thing right well awesome uh so yeah well i've got everyone here i'll just go over some things with the okage website and um so wrapping up this this pd um if you would like a certificate please email us at ocage at ou.edu. And I will type that in the chat so that way you'll have it just in case I froze up while I was saying that. So let me just type that. So that's our email. If you need anything or if you ever have any questions, uh, please send an email to that address. And 
I check it all the time, so you will get a reply pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, if you'd like a certificate, just let me know and I'll send one to you. Uh, we are going to continue this series. We're going to do next month's topic on the physical and human characteristics of East Asia. And that's going to be led by OKAGE teacher consultant, Susan Smith. So I'm really excited about that. And we've already got it set up for Tuesday, August 11th at 4 p.m. So uh, if you wanna go ahead and write that down and get that on your calendar, uh, that would be great. Um, so yeah, now I'll just go over some things with the OKAGE website in case you're not familiar with it. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys and just point out a few things uh, so that you guys can be aware of. So let me share my screen. So I'm gonna stop Gary's screen sharing. Gary, you're getting kicked off. Oh, no problem <laughs> there. By the way, I wanna thank everybody. And if anybody wants to email me directly, they can do that also. Great, thank you, Gary. All yeah, right. thank you. So let's see. All right, so we are, we're going to continue this professional development series and I've set up a place for you guys to let us know if there are any topics or standards that you would like for us to include. And that's just right here on our homepage, which is just okageweb.org. And I will type that in the chat too, so you'll have it. Just in case um, you need to refer back to that later. So yeah, right here on the carousel, I've got a link where you can click and you can request any topics or standards that you might want us to cover and we'll look over that and if we get enough people for a certain topic then we'll push really hard to get that out for you guys so um we've also we'll also have all of gary's materials available under the lesson plans so you'll be able to click there and then they're organized by year standard grade level so if you just want to see every lesson plan you can just go to here and um, they're organized by the most recent so if you just want to go to lesson plans and view all you'll see Gary's stuff right here because that's the most recent one and then um, right now the only the notes are up there but I'll get Gary's PowerPoint up there yeah. um, by tomorrow so you guys will have that too and that'll be in the same uh, same location as the notes so if you've already got that link saved you won't need to um, to resave a link or have to remember where to find it. I'll so, try to do it as soon as I can. I'll yeah, yeah. Them, so yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank a, you. A day, maybe a day, yeah. Yeah, well, so we've got our lessons right here. And then um, we also have our giant maps. So if you think you might want to use one of our giant maps for your classroom, all the information is here on our website. And we've got images of the maps and on the request form we've got the dimensions of the maps as well so that way you can kind of plan your space um, for how you're going to fit it into literally fit it into your classroom or your school um, i think that's all i've got about okay scott um is there anything that you can think of that i've forgotten brenda anything you can think of that i've left out so we were laughing that this is a social distancing map if you had a small group get up there they can social distance out on the big map <laughs> then you can have another group come up but um i put something in the chat to crowdsource your ideas before you leave off so if you're in a distance learning venue how could you teach the concept of regions that gary was talking about so i know if you're virtual you can throw pictures and things into google classroom or you know, whatever you're using to show that. Um, so it might be that you have to print the picture, print a page of pictures if you're sending a packet home, but that's kind of things we're thinking about now is he gave you great ideas, how to use those same ideas if you're in a distance learning venue. The other thing is if you wanna save the chat, cause there were some people that put links in the chat, um, at the bottom, there's like three little dots. If you click on it, you can save the chat and that will save it to your computer and you'll have the links. Brenda, I was just gonna say that we'll all save, the, we're gonna save the chat, clean it up a little bit and then mm -hmm. post on the OKH website as well. 
Yeah. So Cody just put in here um, about virtual notebooks for kids. So I think that um, there are many programs out there that do virtual interactive notebooks. And I think that's a great way to do that. And then Summer talked about if you have a Zoom or some kind of Google Hangout or something, they could go in, in a breakout room or in a group and create a region. That's a good idea too. Yeah. It makes it more interactive too for your kids. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's all I've got about OCage. Uh, just one more quick thing. I was just going to let you guys know that we are on social media. We've got our links right here on the homepage of the website so you can check out those pages as well. Um, we've got our Facebook page here. We've got our Twitter right here. And then we've got our Instagram that we just now got started. So we don't have a ton of posts, but we're working on it. So um, yeah, so just please reach out if there's anything that I can help you with. Um, again, my email is ocage at ou.edu. And um, also, don't forget to email us for your PD certificates, and we'll get those sent to you. And uh, we have one also good suggestion, is cyberspace a region? What do you think, Gary? Area of common characteristics. It depends how far cyberspace goes. <laughs> I don't yeah. know, Scott. That's a good one. I, I think that there's there's actually been a lot of research that cyber communities and cyber regions are just as real. They are not something that you can draw a boundary around like you can a wind farm, but they're right. absolutely regions. Yep. We had a project looking at Jane Austen uh, chat rooms as a region in cyberspace, for example. But yeah, it's a great question. So I put in the chat box that we will send out the Zoom link for you and um, Becca will post the Zoom link and I send a, a newsletter out that has the password in it or you can email us and we'll give you the password. We're trying not to get Zoom bombed. <laughs> so that's why we don't share the password on social media because that's what happened to us. But we'll send a link out for the next date. And I, want, I wanted to thank once again, um, you guys are really lucky in Oklahoma to have Okay, because not many places do you have geography professors who are willing to teach us a little bit about the content and show you fun ways to do it with kids. And we're very lucky to have Dr. Green and Dr. Gress with us. And if, for those of you that don't know, Becca is also a geography major, a geographer, and they're willing to share their knowledge with you as something that doesn't happen everywhere. So I really appreciate you guys um, doing that for us. Thank you, Brenda. Most of us, I'm putting myself included, were history trained. And so I learn something new every time that I um, come to a presentation about geography. And I put in the chat too, geography encompasses everything. I mean, it's economic systems, it's government systems, it's culture, it's religion, it's the regions, it's everything. So don't let anyone tell you that you're not the most important person in your building because you are. It encompasses it all. <laughs> language, all of it. And so um, we're really appreciative of our geography teachers. So look here, Gary, you got a very good comment that they've struggled to teach and define region and they feel much more confident now. Oh, well, email <laughs> me. Let me know, guys. Okay, any last words for anybody? Well, thank you, Ocage, and thank you, Brenda. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Brenda and Gary, for uh, helping us get this started. I think it's going to be great. So we will meet on August 11th. Is that what we said? Yes. See, I'm old, so I forget. Okay, August yeah, 11th, worried. so put that on your calendar. Yeah. Um, also, the, the entire um, social studies group is going to do an action civics one on August 4th. So August 4th at 4, August 11th at 4, 4. East Asia. Yeah. Okay. I will, anything else for the good of everyone? I think that's all I've got. Well, thank you guys once again for spending your July afternoon with us and we appreciate you very much and hope you have a great evening. All right.
Bye, everyone. Did Gary take off on us? That was great. <laughs> oh yeah, he might have. <laughs> that was really great. Um, region is something that people really struggle, and so yeah, Very yeah, good. he did. He he did leave. So he did say he had to make dinner. I heard him say he had to make dinner. Oh, I see. I see. So Becca, I'll clean up the chat a little bit. Um, because I, <laughs> this Brenda, I sent a couple of notes to Becca. And so when I say my chat, it shows the little discussion that Becca and I had privately. <laughs> I mean, I can gotcha. show it to you, it doesn't matter. But I don't know if all the teachers want to see yeah. us. We were just making <laughs> jokes. Stuff. We, were, we were making so jokes we were. about the state food of Oklahoma being okra. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what I'll do, Becca, it's just a very small file, but I'll go delete some of that stuff and I'll send it to you and you can post it right next yeah. to the, to the um, when we get the video recording. Yeah, um, well, are you sure you don't want me to do it? Because I think you've got kind of a lot on your plate right now. I could- No, that's fine. Would... I'll do it. Okay. All right, well, I can do that. I'm okay, well, I will um, send the recording down um, with Engage OK this week. There'll be a lot of that, so it may take a little bit, but we'll get it back. And, and I think, Brenda, that for next time, we're going to tell Susan, right? It's Susan, right? Yeah, yeah Susan. Mm -hmm. tell Susan to actually spend a little bit of time going over an exact lesson plan. Um, okay, Drew, yeah. He's not in the classroom, so he doesn't have kind of a canned one ready, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, she'll, she'll have help. a lesson plan. And if you want to ever do breakout rooms or um, anything like that, we can we can do that too. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. So we can do that, and they can talk about maybe um, how they do that in their class or something. That might help. Oh, I, that's why I put it in the chat was try to crowdsource a little bit. I, I think the idea is or the the way that we when we chatted about it just the four of us a while ago is that it would be kind of half an hour ish on the knowledge core dump to <laughs> learn and then 20 30 minutes on the lesson mm -hmm. in Gary's case we decided to merge them but I think we're gonna no, I think it went really good because region is hard yeah. no it's it did really it, hard no I thought it went great and and mm -hmm. um, and you've gotten about 10 emails back up <laughs> already <laughs> asking for this, for this stuff so so that's good that's good we'll do them tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> as well mm -hmm. so okay is there anything else you guys want to be brief about or whatever so okay all right thanks brenda well, i thought it went fine so just let me know if you need something and i'll make a link for the 11th are you just just before you go are you because i'm writing the national geographic grant proposal mm -hmm. um, now is it your intention to sort of do this once a month ish throughout the school year as well sure yeah if you want to we sure can um yeah, that might be a lot. <laughs> we're uh, doing, but, well, you know, but we're doing I mean, um, the social studies one once a month. So we could do something where they just talk. If if you don't have someone lined up for them, we can have them with some discussion questions and let them talk in a room. We've done that before too. What, one other, yeah, so I'm writing the proposal and what I have, I'm gonna say we've gonna, we're mm -hmm. gonna do two giant map in the giant map academy which again i think we can social distance because we have the map masks and they're so huge and we go to the history center or whatever and then we're going to put in all virtual ones um as well and so i just yeah so you think it's a good idea to do that um, if, if you schedule them for every for a tuesday every month and like i said if we don't have a presenter one month we'll give them a topic and let them talk about it they like that too because they get to talk to other teachers about what they do yeah uh, well and scott and i were talking about uh just me having like just okay job hours on zoom so people can just come ask me questions uh, mm -hmm. on zoom if they've got they need help finding anything or if they want more information or a clarification about something mm -hmm. um, 
So we think that might that might also kind of fit in with that. There's one, by the way, there's, yeah, so that's a combination. We can just say, no, no, you know, no, no new presentation this month, but we're going to discuss X with, you know, Becca. There was yeah, one. and you, yeah, we can and we could do that every other time too if you wanted to. I mean, if we did a presentation the next month was just talk with, and I can join too. Like, just talk with us um, if they are having something, you know. Or we could give them a topic and they can talk about that, and then come back and talk to Becca or sure something. Okay. You know, you might have some people who are interested in talking about how if they by then, you know, after a couple of months, we'll know if they've had to go distance learning a little bit and then they can talk about how they're doing geography distance learning if they've had to do that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, well, we'll just tentatively plan for that. Mm -hmm. then, I think it's good to keep it every month, even if we have to cancel it because they'll just get used to it. Yeah. I mean, they okay. Can Great. The no, I agree. I just, yep. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I absolutely agree. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to check that was kind of your plan because yeah. we're and that's fine. And like we're doing the first Tuesday of the month for um social studies. So we can choose the second Tuesday or we can just go by ear when you're available. I mean, either way, but if they're used to kind of Tuesday, I think it works. Yeah. Oh, and Brenda, I, I was gonna say, can... um, I don't oh, I don't think I'm on your list. I don't know if I get emails about Okay, so if you go to the front page of the State Department and scroll uh -huh. all the way to the bottom, there's a okay. place where you put in your email address and then you can choose however many you want. Oh, uh, okay, okay, you good. You can choose all, right, all of that. them and be super informed or just a <laughs> few. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah, I need to do that. That way I'll be in the loop. Well, the reason, and we went to Gov Delivery instead of our listserv, so that meant that most of my stuff didn't transfer over into the other one so everybody has to go back and put their email uh, back in and then that automatically populates in there so oh, okay well i'll go i'll go yep. do that you can and you can do science too if you wanted to see what they're doing if sure if they ever <laughs> do something that so we all i also had a request scott for you to do your climate change again in this format yeah, because there'll be people who didn't come to OKH to yeah. that yeah, meeting. That's fine. I mean, why don't we just why don't we just say the second Tuesday? I mean, the eleventh is the second Tuesday. Okay. Why don't we, Becca? Is that okay with you to just say the second Tuesday at four is OKH time? Right. Yeah, I think that would be fine. Yeah. And like I said, if there's any month that that doesn't work because it's a holiday or something like that, we can just boot it to the next month or something that's right. what i'm doing and 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 i'm i'm happy to we can put me down for september if and if that's fine and i can't remember who did it with you that showed how they used it oh, in the class it was angela trent right yeah so maybe yeah, she, she would be willing to join you. us and at the end she could kind of show how because i thought that went great too yeah that so. would be good and yeah. you're gonna have some new teachers that ha that probably didn't come to anything okay yet so and Scott, you already need to update your climate change lesson to talk about Siberia. So you can add that in. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I need to There's lots of updates you can make. But who knows? You might start late because between now and September, like who even knows what's gonna happen. So oh, yeah, the no, beauty I've... of geography is it changes all the time, you know. So yeah. you can have to you can have the same conversation and then later on. I yeah. thought that was cool. He showed like the picture, the old picture, and then the picture today to kind of show. Yeah. Yeah, that That's was really cool. good. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Brenda. So we'll just tentatively say the second Tuesday, and, and we've already got the next one, as you told. And okay. So up. what I'll do is I'll go in right now and set up a reoccurring link for the second Tuesday, and that will be the same link, same password every time. So they won't have to send it out. It'll be the okay. same one. So okay. I'll send it out every month, but if they have it, they'll know it. They just will have it. Okay, that makes sense. So I'll do that right now and then I won't forget. So, all right. Okay. Thank you awesome. guys again. I really appreciate yeah. you doing this. Okay, yeah, well, we... this one's really great. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, all right, thanks, bye. See ya. Bye.